On this channel, we explore all things finance, career and self-development. Hi everyone, my name is Sanjana and in today's video, we'll be talking about the seven habits that earned me six figures or 100K salary by the age of 24. I've done a few videos on my channel about this before, which I'll include in the description box down below in case you are interested. So let's get started. Number one, self-respect and knowing your self-worth. I think it's very important to be able to identify when it is the right time for you to move on from your job and when you should stay. A personal story of mine was that I worked at KPMG and my manager had actually told me that I wasn't going to get promoted at my job and that's when it occurred to me to rage apply. Now rage applying is essentially when your manager has ticked you off and you have gone out of your way to go ahead and apply for multiple jobs in the hopes that you get hired at another organization just because of the rage that has been built up inside of you for not either being promoted or not getting an increase in salary. Now I could have stayed at KPMG and earned the bare minimum, perhaps a 3% salary increase just in line with inflation, which really wasn't going to help my situation. So I decided to leave my job and apply for a big four bank in Australia. Thankfully I was able to land a job at a big four bank, i.e. Westpac, and I was able to increase my salary by $50,000. I think it's very important to understand your self-worth and how much you actually mean to the company and respecting yourself and really identifying opportunities when they do come about because otherwise you're just going to be taken on for a ride and you're going to be earning the same income that you were always earning. Two, living minimally. Because I've come from a very average middle class family, we were always taught, my brother and I were always taught to live below our means and always try and save or invest as much of our money as possible. Because because of this thought process that was instilled in me, I was very mindful when it came time to going out with friends, going out with colleagues and making sure that I didn't spend too much. I think what also really shed a light on this as well was seeing my family struggle growing up living in Australia, not being able to afford you know, rent and basic expenses. That did really open up my eyes and made me think a different way. So for example, if you were to earn about $1,000 per week, I would try and limit my expenses as much as possible so I could invest my money and save my money as well as much as possible and it wasn't until last year that I was able to travel to Europe for the first time being 28 years old all of my friends had traveled to Europe before but I was able to thankfully do that last year and I had an amazing time living minimally has its pros and cons I think a lot of the pros include being able to save more money being able to invest more money and we all know that with compound interest the more earlier that you start the better it is for you in the long term and I'm actually seeing the rewards of that today number three proactiveness I think there comes a time in your career when you need to be able to identify when it is the right time to leave and when it's not. So I think a lot of it comes down to the law of diminishing returns as well. You know, if you stay at the same organization for quite some time, you're really not getting that additional benefit in terms of growth, your opportunities, the challenges that are presented to you, networking opportunities, and the ability to change your environment. And that is why it's so important because it comes down to you. No one else is going to do this for you, but you need to be proactive and take out the necessary steps to change your life for you. Because as I said, no one else is really going to do it for you. And this is something that's always resonated within me. Each day that you delay starting or making a change, you're going to have more regret later down the track because you would have hoped that you would have made those changes earlier on in your life. So the decisions that I'm talking about are predominantly around your work, your career, investing decisions, and any uneasy life decisions as well. Number four, closing the learning gap. Now there's a book that I've been reading, Rich Dad, Poor Dad currently, and that speaks to the points around how our schooling system doesn't actually teach us elements around personal finance, how to start a business, Business, how to set up corporate structures or how to even do our taxes. Schools essentially teach people how to make money and how to live paycheck to paycheck as opposed to teaching ways that you can get your money to work for you. The book also suggests that a lot of people will not actually question this system as well and they believe it is a matter of life and a fact of life that this is just a system and this is the way it is but a select few will actually question this and challenge this thought and those select few people will actually become successful over time. I highly encourage you guys to read 
this book if you haven't already. I'll make sure to include a link of it down below. I think Robert Kiyosaki has a wealth of knowledge around investing and he speaks to the ideas of investing your money into assets that actually grow faster than the rate of inflation. Leverage bank debt, but you want to make sure you utilize debt in a productive manner and ensure that you avoid bad debts altogether. Number five, you come last. So this is also an element that I got from Rich Dad Poor Dad in that the rich utilize their debt and leverage debt from banks because they are then able to build out their portfolios, investments, and they're quite smart about leveraging the bank's ability to give you a loan and how you can make it work for yourself. Essentially, my formula always has been that whenever you get paid from your nine to five job or any additional income that you earn, then the first point of action or the first point of call would be to pay off any debts that you've got, so any bills, and then pay off your credit cards, pay off any personal loans as well that you've got, and then any money that is left over is what you can put towards your savings, investments, and then whatever is left after all of that has been deducted, then you are left with money that is your discretionary spending and what you can spend on, you know, interests, hobbies, going out for dinners and things like that. I think it's also very important to understand as well the reason why you've actually gotten into debt in the first place. If you're finding yourself taking out a personal loan to fund your holiday, then that should be an indicator or a trigger point for you to realize that maybe you can't actually afford that holiday and maybe you shouldn't be taking that holiday in the first place if you can't afford it with your own income. That's always been something I'm quite mindful of as well. I've never really taken out a personal loan. I've got a credit card, but only for the purposes of reward points. But then again, it comes down to closing the learning gap and finding out ways that can actually benefit you financially and understanding different products, different bank products, and how they can actually benefit you to be able to make more money in the long term. Number six, credit card myths. A lot of us are told about getting a credit card early on so that you can show the bank when it does come time to apply for a loan that you have a good spending history and you are able to pay off your debts in a timely manner. Now, this is most definitely a myth, especially in Australia, if you've got a credit card for the reason of proving that you are able to pay your debt on a timely manner, then this is definitely not necessary. I've actually not had a credit card for a very long time. I've actually been able to secure investment loans without even proving I had a credit card. And just FYI, a credit card does also bring down your serviceability and your borrowing power as well if you are looking at getting a loan or two. So just keep that in mind that you definitely don't need to have a credit card to be able to show to the bank that you have a good you know, credit history. Number seven, financial awareness. Specifically speaking around disorganized finances. Now, if you don't know how much debt you have, then your actions in life are not going to reflect in ways that can actually bring that debt down. So you wanna make sure you're across all the personal loans, all credit cards, all assets or liabilities that you do have and you know exactly what you're paying, how often you're paying, just knowing where you stand financially and then reverse engineering that, you'll be able to identify the actions which are actually gonna help you to minimize your debt um, overall. As you know, we're always bombarded with news around low interest rates, high interest saving accounts, and if you don't know what your interest rates are at the moment, then you may be losing out on those benefits in being able to maximize on reducing your loan rates or being able to find a savings account that's actually earning you more interest than your current one. So it's very important to stay on top of your finances, be able to budget your money as well, and be completely transparent with yourself as well. So those are the seven habits that I personally utilized when I was the age of 23, 24, working towards increasing my income to a six-figure salary. Just wanted to put a disclaimer out there as well that this video is not to make you feel bad about your finances or anything like that. And if you're earning less than a six-figure salary and you are happy with that as well, then that is totally fine as well. This is just for the people who are feeling a little bit stuck and want to be able to earn a six-figure salary because they need it to manage their day-to-day -day expenses and whatnot. These are just a few tips to help you get yourself on the right track and get your finances in check. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, make sure you follow me over on my Instagram and my TikTok. I post there daily and make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next one.